It's so good, amen, to be in the presence of the Lord. And amen, his presence there is joy, the fullness of joy as we, amen, celebrate and give the Lord thanks for who he are to us. He is the God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we think or acts according to the power the Holy Spirit that works in us and through us. That's why the word to Zerubbabel is not by might nor by power, but is by my spirit, saith the Lord. I submit to you this afternoon that we cannot do anything except by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even Jesus, when he was going into his ministry, the Bible says that the heaven opened the Spirit came down upon him like a dove. The Father is saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I'm so glad I'm a son this afternoon. Amen. Amen. We are sons of God. Amen. And the weakness of the Son is the Spirit. The Spirit bear witness with His Spirit that we are the children of the Most High God. Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah. You know, Sunday, last week, Sunday, I had a topic, amen, bless the name of the Lord. God has a plan for our lives in 2023. And we had gone through the, amen, where God making a covenant with Abraham and uh, a blood covenant. And we went through Joseph, that God raised up Joseph, amen, and down to the line, amen, that Joseph went into Egypt and how God has blessed him in Egypt. And then we find that also that Joseph's father and the family came down to Egypt. And the time came then Joseph and said, die and favor rise up against the children of Israel because they were multiplying too fast. The Bible tells us that, um, amen, that after a while, the king says, you know, I want all the sons, all the children that are born, the males, to be thrown into the river. He want to kill the seed, and if you kill the seed, there's no production. But anyhow, God had a plan. I so, I'm so great this afternoon to know that God has a plan. It would seem very difficult to know that all that the children of Israel were going through, that God had a plan. And the Bible tells us that after that, then that uh, Moses came on the line because Amen, his mother saw that he was a goodly child when he was born, and she hid him for three months. And then, amen, uh, she was inspired by the Holy Spirit to make a, a little ark, amen, with, with slime, amen, and with pitch it, and put Moses in it and put it on the river. And as Moses was put on the river, he said, the daughter, you must watch this little child in this ark. I love the way how God inspires and how God leads. And the ark was put on the river and amen, God will so have it be that it will drift and drift and drift until it come right before Pharaoh's daughter. Hallelujah. And amen, and she recognized that it was a baby in this ark as she was there with her, her servants. Amen. And God, as she takes the baby and she wants the baby for herself. It was God working his purpose out. Hallelujah. And therefore Moses' sister um, amen, told the, the, um, the Pharaoh's daughter, do you need a nurse? And she said, of the Hebrews, she said yes. And the little daughter, Moses' sister, went and get her mother, which was Moses' mother, to look after the baby. You think that that is just natural? That is supernatural. Hallelujah. That the same mother who put the, her by that put the baby in the river is now going to look after the baby. And therefore she's going to bring up Moses according to the Hebrew, according to the laws of God. Amen. The God of Abraham and God of Isaac. So therefore she will instill in him the things of the Jewish people, the Hebrews' children. And Moses grew up and you know the story of how he became a big man. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And therefore, as he grew up, the Bible says that he went out one day and saw, amen, the children of Israel and the taskmaster were beating them. And he, he, took, amen, he took hold of him and said, kill him. 
bury him in the sand. Because you know what? There was his brother in that was going through such suffering. But when he realized that he was known and how Pharaoh might know him, and the Bible said that he ran away, he went away. And the Bible says, amen, that he went to Midian and there he married and became a shepherd boy and looking after the, the sheep of the Midian, amen, the king that was in Midian. And we find that as he entered into the mountain, God's purpose plan is working out. Amen. God's have a plan in your life. And sometimes things seem to be so hard. God, why you let me pass through this situation? But when you are passing through, you don't understand. The devil will come with every situation and every thought in your mind. Because the devil wants to blind you. But if you can see beyond the mountain. Because there's something beyond the mountain. Hallelujah. And therefore, Moses was there. And he went you into the mount of God. And there God spoke to him. Let us get that scripture that when God's plan began to come, amen, together. And that is Exodus chapter 3. And from verse 1. Hallelujah. This is the story. Because remember the children of Israel are going through terrible situation. But God has allowed them to be where? In Egypt because he told Abraham that they will be in a country that will oppress them. But after 400 years, I will bring them out. So God knew all about what they were going through. God knows all about what you're going through. If God is for you, then who can be against you? God knows when your head is aching. When you have a pain, God knows everything about you. There isn't anything that God doesn't know about us. God knew that they were suffering, but God has a plan, a purpose. The Bible says that Moses now, who amen, was saved because his mother put him in the basket and put him on the river and went to Pharaoh's daughter and hey, come up in the Pharaoh's house in the kingdom. But now he's on the mountain top with a king that is greater than all the kings of Egypt. Amen. Hallelujah. God is greater than Pharaoh, but here now we're meeting with God. The Bible says, and Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he, led, and he led the flock towards the backside of the desert and came to a mountain of God, even of Herb. He came to the place where God wanted him to be. You know something that God wants us to be a place that he wants to meet with us. And God will bring us to that place if he takes you through the storm and through the pain and through the suffering. God will bring you to that place where he wants you to be. Amen. Doesn't matter what it takes. God will bring you there. Hallelujah. So God bring Moses to the place that God wants him to be. Whatever he has pass through God allow it to happen because God have a purpose a plan in his life a plan for his people Israel and Moses is a part of the plan Moses is the one that he chose to be the leader of this great nation God blessed the name next verse tells us verse 2 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed amen knowledge will tell us that if a bush is burning it will be consumed all of us that know about fire you know back home we used to cook wood to cook with wood and you know we cook sometimes with bush but if you put that fire is in a bush it must consume hallelujah but so therefore Moses now with all his wisdom hallelujah and bless God all his knowledge amen looking at the bush and not consume amen he wondered what is this mystery there's something that is happening here that I don't truly understand amen the bush is on fire but it's not being consumed so what type of bush is this <clears throat> so the next verse tells us uh, as he saw that verse 3 and as he saw that he said, Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sign why the bush is not burned. I do not understand why this bush is not burning because I have knowledge and understanding that if a bush is on fire, it must be consumed. Isn't that right? But here Moses now looked 
looked at this bush, hallelujah, bless God, and saw this bush on fire, but it is not being consumed. I'm glad that, hallelujah, if God is for you, no matter what fire you're going through, you will not be consumed because he is a God of fire. The Bible said he answered by fire. Bless the name of the Lord. He is a God as that's able to do sin. So Moses saw it and he turned aside. Hallelujah. Remember now God is preparing him. Because it's, it's God's plan. It's not man's plan. It's God's plan. And Moses is a part of the plan of God. Because he will be the one that God will lose to lead the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt. So God has come to him at the appointed time. God has an appointed time for every one of us. God does nothing by chance. He has an appointed time time no matter how we cry and how we mourn God have a time to come and God will only come in his time not in your time but well, you got to learn how to trust in God trust in God and say God I'm waiting on you I'm trusting in you I'm not going to move from this place until I you have to say I'm trusting I'm not moving hallelujah because I know you have a plan for my life Hallelujah. Bless God. In verse 4 it tells us as Moses now pondering upon this bush. Amen. Verse 4 tells us and when the Lord saw that he turned aside. Hallelujah. God was with him. God was directing him. God was leading him. And when God saw that he turned aside to see God call unto him and uh, out of the midst of the bush and said Moses, Moses. And he said what? Here am I. God saw him. God, you see, the, the thing is this, that we cannot do anything for God unless we are in relationship with him. We, work, we are workers together with God. So God is going to work with Moses uh, to fulfill his plan and his purpose. So here God said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Hallelujah. The bush is talking to him. <laughs> Out of the bush, the voice came. Hallelujah. God clothed himself. Hallelujah. In that fiery bush. You see, God can do anything. Isn't that right? I said, God can do anything. Hallelujah. So therefore, God said, no. And Moses said, here, my verse 5 tells us what, what the, um, is, is happening here. Verse 5. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy what? Put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place you stand there. Hold on. This is what? Hallelujah. For the place where you stand is what? Holy ground. Somebody say holy ground. I believe that this place is a holy ground this afternoon. I believe that we are standing in the presence of God. And maybe we don't have a burning bush, but we have God's word. We have God's presence. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. The Bible says that way Jesus is. Amen. There is what? Heaven there. I believe that Jesus is here. And if Jesus is here, heaven is here this afternoon. I don't know what you're going through. But if you allow the devil to blind your mind that you cannot see. And you don't understand that the presence of God is here. That Jesus is here. Then you will be most miserable. You will leave this place the same way you come in. Because you have not met with Jesus. The Bible said that when you come to church. You must enter the gates with thanksgiving. And enter his court with praise. We got to learn to praise the Lord and give him glory because he is worthy of all praise. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So now God said, Moses, I want you to take off your shoes. Amen. If you're going to come before me, you got to take some things off. You got to lay aside some things. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. And I believe this afternoon, as we heard the testimony of our beloved Leron, I believe that God has caused him to release some stuff. And he's not the same again from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, he has been released and has been set free. So Moses come before the Lord with his shoes now. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. His shoes uh, represent, amen, where God is going to take you. When God, you see, because your, your feet represent where God is going to take you. You can't go nowhere unless your feet move you. If you're going to move, somebody got to carry you. So therefore, your, so therefore your feet take off those shoes. Your feet got to take you where God wants to take you. 
Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. And so, and so it is that, that so many times that we, we go where God don't want to take us. We go all by ourselves. And God said, uh, I, I don't want you to go there, but you still go because you want to please somebody. You want to please a friend. You want to please somebody. But God don't want you to be there. And sometimes we get messed up because we go places where God don't want us to be. So God said unto him, Moses, I want you to take off your shoes because this place. I said, you got to honor his presence. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. It's amazing. That's why I, when I come in this place in the afternoon, amen, I'm greet, to be, to be greeted. I just go in that place and sit down because the moment that I begin to pray, I'm in the presence of the God. Hallelujah. My, my, there's a change when I say, Lord, I come in this place to worship you. It means that I start worshiping God from that moment that I said, I come here to worship you. I know I was worshiping him before he come here, but when I get here, there's a difference. There's reverence. I reverence him. Hallelujah. Bless now. All my talk and all my thoughts is with him because I want God to bless me in this place. So Moses is now with God in the mount. Hallelujah. Bless God. God said, Moses, take off the shoes. For this is what? Holy ground. Okay. Chapter verse 6 tells us. And, and moreover, he said, I, I love this because God has continued to say this to make himself known. The true and living God. He spoke to Abraham. Hallelujah. He spoke to Isaac. And he spoke to Jacob. We must know our God, Amen, and the name of our God. Hallelujah. There are many gods, but there are only one God. The Bible says in Egypt there were many gods. So God here is revealing unto Moses... And I believe that Moses understood this because I believe his mother taught him. But whether or not he forgot all about it, God was reminding him. His God came into him and began to speak to him and said, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid of looking upon God. So now when God, all the time Moses was looking at the bush. But the moment, the time that God revealed himself by the name of hallelujah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, he realized that he was in the presence of the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. And he hid his face from the glory because now God had revealed himself. He not only seeing the bush anymore, but he sees the glory of God. When he saw the glory of God in a different dimension, he hid his face. He recognized that I must honor him who is the God of my fathers. Amen. I must reverence him who is the God of my fathers. And therefore he hid his face as it were from looking at God. It wasn't presumptuous. And sometimes we are so presumptuous that we want to do what we feel like in the presence of God. When God anointing begins to move. And therefore it tells us that, that now God begins to deal with him. Remember God, amen, hallelujah, has raised him up to be a leader. Because the children of Israel must come out of bondage. And this is the time that God promised Abraham that he will bring them out. Okay. And verse 7 says here, he tells us, begins to talk to and, and the Lord said, I have what? You see, one of the things that we, we, we think that God don't see. But God sees all about, as I said before, God sees what you are going through, what you're doing in the bed at night, uh, amen, what you're saying that you should not say, things that you're looking at at the television you should not looking at. God sees everything. And that's what God says. Uh, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt I have seen it uh, amen over oh, coming up to more 400 years all that time that they were in Egypt I saw the affliction I saw what they were going through hallelujah I know what they have been going through but God will never come until his time is It's God's timing, not man's timing. So therefore, God said, I see all of these things. That what you're going through, your affliction. Hello, my people that were in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. For I know your sorrow. I know what you are going through. I know what my people have been going through. I know their sorrow. Sometimes we think God not hearing us. Oh, I've been suffering for so long, many years. It seemed like God not here in me. Hallelujah. I don't know what to do. 
Hallelujah. But you know what you can do? We can keep praying. One thing that the children of Israel and bondage was doing, they kept praying. They kept seeking God. And maybe many generations have died. Many have died out. But yet those that remain keep what? Seeking God. Calling upon God. We can call upon God because prayer is the key in every situation. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Sometimes you don't have to make a long prayer. Sometimes you just say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy. You don't have to cry out and make a long prayer. Just believe that what you say, that you believe that God hear you and that God will answer you. God said, I heard. I have seen. You see, not God only on here, but God see. He said, I saw... I saw, I heard your sorrows. And what he said in verse 8, he says here, when God sees and he heard, and I am come down. It was not Moses now, it was God saying, I come to take control. He said, and I have come down to deliver them out of the, the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up out of the land under a good land and a large land, under a land flowing with milk and with honey on today. Hallelujah. I come to do something that no other power can do. I'm so glad that no matter what we do and how we try, but there's no power that can do certain things. God allow us to do what we can do with something, amen. What we cannot do, God will do it for us. I want to say to you what the doctors cannot do, God will do it for you. Thank God for the doctors. Thank God for the surgeon. Thank God for the medical profession. But what they cannot do, God will do do it for you. If you will put your trust in God, God will do it for you. So God said, hallelujah, I come down. I heard you and I come down to deliver you. This 2023, God comes to deliver us. God come to do a new thing. Hallelujah. God come to change those things that hold us bound. Your power is going to be broken and destroyed because the Lord come to deliver us. God cares about you and what you are going through. And sometimes we don't realize that God cares. But God cares about what you are going through. He knows all about you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that. So here we find that Moses now finds himself in a position that God has brought him into. God is preparing him. What God is preparing you for this 2023. God, what are you preparing me for? The question is with you. Ask God the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Hallelujah. We can talk with God. What do you want me to do this 2023? Hallelujah. There's a change, there's a shift. What do you want me to do? And God will hear and answer prayer. Because we are faithful. He's faithful to our prayer. Okay, it's fine here that Moses, I mean, God came on to deliver. Verse 9 tells us. He said, Amen. So there, there, are, there are nations, there are things, there are demonic forces that are holding us back. Like how the, the, the nation was holding back the children of Israel. And you find the devil is, oh, you want to make progress, but the devil is holding you back. But I can say with a conviction that 2023, God is going to release you from whatever was holding you back in 2022. God is going to release you. God is going to release you. He's going to take you to places. If you believe it in the name of Jesus. Because there are things that have been holding you back. And you know it first very well. That there are things in your life that has been holding you back. But God is going to break those powers. You're going to be released from them in the name of Jesus. He said, now, the, hallelujah, bless the name of the Lord. We go back to the verse 9. He said, now therefore, behold... The cry of what the children of Israel is come up unto me. And I have what? Seen and have I've also seen and the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. I have seen it. I have seen what the devil was doing in 2022. I know what the devil has been doing. I know how you want to make strife. But every time you make a strife, amen, you hold back. But you're going to be released. 2023, amen, is going to be the year of release. That God is going to fulfill his promise to you and his promise to me. God is going to bring us out, amen, as it were. Hallelujah, with a blessing upon our lives. He is going to lift us up 
from where we are, where we think that we cannot move, God is going to cause us to move. There's going to be a fire, a Holy Ghost fire coming upon you that's going to lift you up. You know, in the natural, when the fire touch you, you move. Anybody know fire? When fire touch you, you move. When the Holy Ghost fire touch you, you're going to have to move. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to remove you from where you are. I'm going to take you to another place. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. He's going to move you out from where you are and take you to another place. So he find uh, uh, the Egyptian oppressed them. And God now is working his purpose out. The devil has oppressed you. The Bible says that, according to what Peter said, that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good. Speaking about Jesus, Jesus went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. There are many that are oppressed of the devil today. But in the name of Jesus, according to the promise of God, amen, he's going to deliver us from every oppression, every depression, every frustration. In the name of Jesus, the deliverance coming to your life, the deliverance coming to your home, the deliverance coming to your family. There's going to be a deliverance because of the power of the Holy Spirit. He said he anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him if God is with you as the word said according to Peter Acts um, I think Acts 2 38 according to Peter he said that God was with him sorry John um, Acts 10 I think was but God was with Jesus Hallelujah. The anointing that was upon him. So God is with Moses. And Moses cannot go down into Egypt unless God put an anointing upon him. It takes the anointing that will destroy the yoke and lift every burden. So God has to prepare him. He's in the presence of God. He's the presence of the anointing. When you're in the presence of the anointing, you've got to open your ear and hear what God has to say. So Moses was listening to what God has to say. Because he's in the presence of of the, and God is speaking. When God is speaking, we got to keep silent and listen to God. Sometimes we want to speak, speak, speak and not listening to God. We have to listen to what God has to say. That's the problem with many of us. We just go to pray. We talk, talk, talk and get up. Wait, what God has said to you. You talk to God, but you expect God to talk back to you. All you want to do is to go before God and talk. But have you wait and hear what God has to say? And that's the problem that we have. We are not hearing what God has to say. We have a lot of talk, but not a lot of hearing. We need to learn how to wait on God and hear what God has to say. So God promised that he will deliver them of the depression. And verse 10 tells us, And he came, Come now, that God speak to Moses. Now have prepared you. You understand who I am. But God is still dealing with him. It's like how God is dealing with us. We have not reached here yet. But we are going from glory to glory to glory. And so it is God is be praying Moses. Amen. That he will understand who God truly is. And what God can do and what God cannot do. Amen. And there is nothing that God cannot do. He said come now therefore. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses, you are the one that I call. I'm going to use you. Hallelujah. I'm going to use you. God wants to use each and every one of us. Differently. We have all have a different anointing for different things. God said, I'm going to use you to bring this people out of bondage in Egypt. Amen. I raise you up. I allow your life to be speared. Amen. I allow you to go before care, uh, before fear, to be brought up in Pharaoh's house, uh, knowing all the arts and all the power and all the gods. But now I want you to understand and know that I am the true and living God. Uh, the God that who brought your fathers out of you, the Sheldings. Amen. Abraham. And declare unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to bless him and bless his seed. Now Moses, hallelujah, I want you to go and bring these children out of Egypt. Hallelujah. It seems to be a hard task for Moses, knowing that he ran away from Egypt and know the power of the Egyptian, know the power of the gods that in Egypt. But I'm so glad when the true God speaks to you. 
Amen. And you recognize the true and living God, you have no fear. Amen. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of poor love in a song mind. But God is going to remove every fear that we have. If you have any fear this afternoon, God is going to remove it. How are we going to remove it? By his word. His word and the Holy Spirit are going to speak to you. That what you were afraid of before is going to be a remove in the name of Jesus. Verse 11 says, verse 12 says this. Hallelujah. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. Isn't it amazing that when we begin to move out on God's plan, God's purpose, God never uh, 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 wanted us to go anywhere by ourselves. He said, and he said, sure, certainly I will be with thee. God speaking to him. I want you to know that God is with us this afternoon. It doesn't matter what is going on around us. I don't matter what is happening at the moment, but God, I have the assurance I don't know if you have the assurance that God is with you. I have the assurance that God is with me. Amen. In spite of my failures, in spite of my weakness, uh, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you even unto the end. The God who created the heavens and the earth uh, and all that there is, is God come to dwell with us and within us. Uh, I know sometimes it's hard for a natural mind to understand. And that's why we are not in the flesh, but we must be in the spirit because in order to understand spiritual things, we must be in the spirit. It's the spirit of man that understand the things of God in the spirit of man that trusts God hallelujah and trust his word our natural mind can never trust the word of God but when we are in the spirit hallelujah there is an inner man in us that called the spirit of man within us we believe God's word by the inner man the spirit for the knowledge that tells us it can't be done so God is dealing with Moses. Amen. He is, he is dealing with his natural mind because God is now saying to Moses here in this verse, he said, and he said, certainly I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt ye shall serve God upon this mountain. God said are, are you going to come back to this mountain? You're going to bring the people back to this mountain. Whether or not you want to believe it or not. Amen. You're going to bring back the people on this mountain and you're going to praise God on this mountain. Somebody give God some praise. Give him some praise. You're going to praise God. You're going to praise God. You're going to praise God on this mountain. Sometimes God, hallelujah, allow us to go through certain things. Uh, what we are going through, certain God, sometimes God move us away from certain things. But God said to Moses, I'm going to bring you back here and you're going to bring the people back here. Amen. You're going to serve me. You're going to worship me on this mountain. Sometimes we feel, amen, that we can't make it. But God said, I'm going with you. I'm going with you, Moses. And you're going, to be, you're going to bring the people back here. Hallelujah. Bless God. Looking at it in the natural, Moses must say, look in the natural. But God, 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 God gave him, oh, hallelujah. God gave him a word. He said, I am going with you. Isn't it, isn't it good to know when God said, I'm going with you? Isn't it Jesus said, I'm with you even unto the end, that whatever you're going through, death might be near at the door. You might feel you're going to die. Sickness come upon you. You feel you can't make it. But God said, I'm going to be with you in spite of what you're going through. I'm going to be with you. And you're going to praise me on this mountain. Hallelujah. You're going to praise me on this mountain. You're going to praise me in this house. You're going to praise me in this place. I'm going to be with you. Amen. You're going to give me glory in this place. I'm going to, amen. Hallelujah. Cause you to rejoice in this place. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Because it's not to do. Amen. What, what I am going to do is going to cause you to give me praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you're doing in my life, you're going to give me praise. I'm going to change up everything. I'm going to allow you to know that I am the God that said I'm with you. You, and I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be with you even unto the end. That's what God is saying. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to go with you. 
Hallelujah. Bless God. Next two verses that I want to read. Verse 13 and verse 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? It's important that they know the name because in Egypt, hallelujah, they are gods with all types of name, hallelujah, and the Egyptians know the name of their God. So Israel now says, and Moses now says, what to tell the people that is your name? Because the names make a lot of difference. The Bible says the name shall be called Jesus because the name makes a difference. Because the name amen, makes a difference. The name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sin. Because there's saving and power in the name. The name makes a difference. You cannot go to the bank and draw unless you give your name. What is your name? Yes, I have a lot of money. It's in the bank. But what is your name? What are you going to sign? You got to sign your name. It's your name that makes the difference. Habosi kaboshata. Helabosi abosh. Your name makes the difference. Hallelujah. Bless God. Wherever you go, you hear hallelujah. Veronica. I'm not going to run for that name. Because my name is not Veronica. Amen. Sister Gail is going to get up and hop like what she do. She's going to run. Because that is her name. Hallelujah. And when you say Jesus. Jesus answered to that name. Because there is no other Jesus than the Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the one. Aboshe, huh? Hallelujah. I have power in his name. And that's what, hallelujah, Moses said. They are going to ask, what is your name? They want to know your name. Hallelujah. 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 There's something about your name that's going to change. Amen. Their perception. Perception. Amen. To know that there's a God that has a name that is different from all the gods in, in Egypt. Hallelujah. What is your name? That's what they're going to want to know. Hallelujah. What shall I say unto them? Amen. I'm going down to bring them out. But they're going to be questions. And I must know the answer. Amen. That's why when we're witnessing, people come up to you with questions. And you must know the answer. How to always have the answer for someone. The last verse that I was want to speak on is verse 14. And this is what God said. And God said unto him, I am that I am. I can imagine how God said to him, I am that I am. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I can see God, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about the natural, but it's spiritual. But I can see God boasting, I am that I am. You know, in other words, there's no other God before me. So I am that I am. Hallelujah. And he said, Thus say thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have said thee unto you. Have I say I I am. Oh, hallelujah. There I am. Hallelujah. I'm before all things. I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. I am the Almighty. He is the God that we serve this afternoon. And a confidence. I mean, hallelujah. And a covenant is with him who died first on the cross. He shed his blood. His blood covenant. And set us free. He I. He is the I am. Amen. Hallelujah. He's before all things. And Moses, oh man, in the process of time, we learn that Moses brought the children out as God had planned. Now, after Moses died, then Joshua take over. God brought them in. And then he brought them out. Hallelujah. Under the leadership of Moses, he brought them out. Under the leadership of Joshua, Joshua take them into the promised land. But thank God that we have another leader. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus, the one who made the sacrifice. He is the one that made the blood covenant. He said, this is my blood which is shed for you and for many. 
Hallelujah. Because of his blood this afternoon, we have victory in the name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above every name. Let us stand as we pray. Hallelujah. Give him praise. He's worthy. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy as we listen to your word this afternoon. Your promises unto us. We see, Heavenly Father, that you have kept your promises to your children, the children of Israel, through Moses and through Joshua. Lord, and those leaders that you have raised up. And Father, we thank you that even this afternoon in this place that we have the victory. We thank you, Lord, for your, for your love towards us. As we worship and give you praise, uh, we believe, Lord, that you have a plan for us. 2023. And God, we have faith to believe that all things are possible. So, Lord, we look to you and we bless you and we honor you. Even as we stand here this afternoon, Lord, in your presence. We pray, Lord, that those that are ailing, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Bless those on Zoom also. My God, as they um, fellowship with us, we pray, God, that you'll be with them as we continue to worship and give you praise and give you glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you are about to do. We know, God, that you are faithful to your word, faithful to your promises, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you.